Hello, my name is Asar Hotep. I'm with Mocha Urban Hang Suite and the Madhu Wendela Institute for the Advancement of Science and Culture. And today we're going to be talking about, or actually more so answering a question of, is the black man God? Uh, this is a question that a lot of individuals, primarily in the 5% nation or in the nation of Islam, uh, seek to answer and have uh, much literature and discussions on uh, YouTube and things of this nature uh, answering that question and so uh, expectingly the next question is is the black woman God and so there's been a lot of debate on that and in that discussion there is rarely if ever a really truly pan-african uh, d entry, you know, or, or paradigm interjected into the actual discussion. And so that's what we're going to do here. And I'm going to use the tools of comparative linguistics and the study of the ancient Nile Valley civilization known as Egypt to bring a different perspective to this question and to uh, challenge the notion uh, that the black man is God. Now, I'm going to say off the bat that, of course, the title of this uh, discussion is, uh, you know, to cause uh, one to think. And what I want to address is the actual name God and where it comes from and how it was used in Africa itself and to see if it applies to the line of questioning that we find in the Nation of Islam or in the 5% Nation. And so, uh, what I will be discussing, uh, a lot of the details will actually be coming from my most recent book. It's called Aluja, Rescue, Reinterpretation, and the Restoration of Major Ancient Egyptian Themes. Uh, you can visit my website at www.asarmhotep.com to pick yourself up a copy. Uh, the first two chapters and the third chapter are dedicated to this discussion of God. And so I won't be going through all the details because you can, you can go through it here. Yes. What we're going to do is to look at the word God itself, go to its root in Africa, and from there get a better conceptualization of what the Africans uh, understand when they utter the words for God. Now, when you look in the etymological dictionaries, they will tell you that the word God itself uh, either goes to a root that means to pour libations, or to sacrifice, or to invoke, uh, to call um, on a deity. And uh, when you start really reading the literature, they're always unsure of if that is really it, which is why there's three separate uh, hypotheses for the origins of the word God. And so when I came across this information, I decided to look a little further because what I found over the years is that when something is uncertain in the Indo-European languages, they tend to really have African roots. And so the early a linguist would stop at Indo-European and wouldn't think that any of its words or concepts had any basis in any other uh, language uh, systems. And so this has begun to change with the Nostratic theory and with uh, linguists such as Bonhard or for even G.J.K. Campbell Dunn who argues that Indo-European comes out of Niger Congo there's more and more people looking into the African languages for the origins of Indo-European. And so that allowed me to really kind of look into the African languages themselves. And so after months and months of researching, um, I've come to find the word God in African languages in that the word God consists of two morphemes. And a morpheme is a, the smallest element of a word that has meaning. You know, whether it's in terms of grammar or two roots together concatenated. Um, and we'll see how this plays out later on in our discussion. And so what I discovered is that the word God 
actually comes from a verb. In the word God, the D consonant is the actual root. The G consonant is a prefix. And so that D sound in the word God actually comes from a word that is cognate with the Chiduba Bantu uh, root Ila. The R, L, N is in Nancy and D is in Derek. These sounds interchange uh, quite rapidly in African and world languages just in general. And so you'll see the same word with those uh, sound roots that interchange. And so this word Ila, I'm not sure if y'all can even see this, but uh, I will make sure that it's uh, put on the screen as you know we go along um, as I edit this. But this word Ila is the root. And this word Ila means to introduce, to put or to set, to push or dispose of something, to arrange, to lay, apply, place, to send away, or anything that exits from the self. It could be a thought, an idea, a sound, or word. Anything that comes from the center has this root. It also means to make, to express, to show, and to speak. Just as, you know, to exit from the self. Speech comes from, um, from the center. And so, what we come to find is that this word has to deal with one who makes one who expresses, one who creates and shows things, reveals things, one who arranges and puts things in order. These are the concepts that underline the meanings of the word God in the African languages. I found this root here, Ila, and its uh, equivalents across the continent to be one of the most prolific roots in African and world languages. So many words come from this root. And so uh, you'll, you'll be able to see that if you um, check this book out here. And so with that, with this concept of coming and exiting from the self, there's automatically a sense of length. This word also means to arrange, to lay, apply, and to put in order. To put in order means to put in a hierarchical series. In other words, to put in a line. And so this idea of putting something in order and putting something in a line now allows the same root by, by way of metaphoric extension to represent height, length, width, breadth. And the same root is used to represent up in terms of the sky. And it's the same root that you'll find in words for sky. And so Matter of fact, most words for God in world languages is going to be connected with a word for sky. And so we discussed that here in chapter 3 on the African origins of the word God. Now this is going to play a, a very critical role in us understanding and answering this question, is the black man God? Because there's different levels by which one has to understand this concept of God. And so... If you've noticed here, uh, I've already written out in the classical ancient Egyptian Medunetur hieroglyphic language a few words that help us to uh, gain some clarity on this particular root here because this root also exists in the ancient Egyptian language under the L or R root or in its variant form. Remember that we said that the R L, D, and N sounds uh, interchange. And so in this particular instance, we have the R or L sound turning into N. What we have here is the word Nunu. Most people say in the ancient Egyptian literature, the Nun. For those familiar with the concept of the Nun in the ancient Egyptian literature, this is the primordial substance for which all things arose. This in essence is the creator itself. But this is more so than just a creator. 
this is any and all things in existence at once. And it lets you know by the term itself, new new. Now we say new new as a reduplication because these uh, vases or whatnot here, these water jugs, represent the new sound. And since they're given in threes, we know that it's plural in terms of new new. We reduplicate it. And then it's re-emphasized here with the three uh, water symbols. But under here, this sign right here is the pet. It's a determinative. It's the word for sky. It's the symbol for sky, I should say. And, and it's letting us know in terms of the concept of extending, stretching, that line we talked about earlier. <laughs> Let me erase this real quick because we're going to need this. This word exists in many African languages and when we do a, a systematic analysis comparing the ancient Egyptian words with other inner African words we get a better sense of what this is and so in the Egyptological literature they only say that this means the primordial waters but there's a phenomenon in African languages or just world languages in general called paronymy and paronymy is the assumption that when two words sound alike that there's some kind of conceptual relationship between the two and so this is the fundamental basis behind the Rabus principle and so the Rabus principle in African languages which they take advantage of they'll take a word that is a homonym a homonym is a word that sounds or is spelled alike uh, two words that are sound or, or are spelled alike but have different uh, meanings, different origins and so we use the words that sound like water to represent a totally different concept. This is just what we use to graphically write this stuff down. But this is not what we're addressing. We're talking about a totally different concept than just water. But conceptually, water in terms of an ocean, an infinite ocean in terms of the sky itself, it plays into the other meaning that is fundamentally at the core here. And so in Chiluba Bantu, this is a language that I like to use a lot. I like to use Chiluba Bantu, Zulu, uh, the Yoruba language, the Collagen language. Collagen is a Nilo-Saharan language along the Nile Valley. Uh, these people live in places like Uganda, Sudan, Tanzania, Kenya, and a small fragment in Ethiopia. Uh, they, they, these languages allow us to get a lot of clarity on these terms. And so this word Nunu has a variant in the Chiluba Bantu language as Nana which means to stretch or to extend <coughs> this word here stretch or extend this is cognate with this term Nunu but then there's another variation and I'll be erasing these, but again, if you can't really see these, I will be placing these on the, uh, the screen as we, as we go along here. And so, <laughs> I'll be looking at notes real quick. When we look at this concept of D-Nana, which means stretched uh, to the limit, um, to extend, to, to bring forth, you know, infinitely. It's basically a word for infinity. And this, this variation gives another variation in terms of a relationship to the divine. And so this, this concept of Nunu, which is applied to the divine in ancient Egypt, is also applied to the divine in Central Africa. And so we put the mu morpheme in front of the root and this is, is this is more so the personification in a singular so like when you hear about a muntu a muntu is a singular person ba into are people you know it's, it's a multitude and so when we're talking about the creator 
this is how you can tell that these Africans are monotheistic because they have a singular morphine uh, the, or a morphine that indicates singularness and so when they say mu nu nu they're talking about the big man the um, the infinite one the large one <laughs> it's another variation called mu ne excuse my uh, bad handwriting mu ne ne and so this concept of mu ne ne means just large big or vast again coming from this root ela the, the l sound turns into n or more so that's when you see this little triangle or half triangle or arrow that means transformed in linguistics so the l transforms into n and so this is so this could be a l l you know or r r or n n and in this case it just happens to be n n and so mununu also means very old or unfathomably old and so when they were, we're talking about the creator here we're talking about the oldest of the old whatever there's nothing older than this and so it's, it's not only is it big and vast and large but it's infinitely old and that's going to play very uh, prominently in our discussion here and so, with a different prefix, we have um, D -ne -ne and C -ne -ne. I think we already had this up here, but put it again. D -ne -ne and C -ne -ne. And so again, I'll have these on the uh, on the screen if you can't see. So D -ne -ne, chi -ne -ne. This is a chi sound. These words lets us know something else about the creator. And so dinene or chinene means the abdomen or the vagina or the matrix. And the word matrix just means the womb. And so to those who are asking the question in terms of, you know, is the creator masculine or feminine, uh, on this level here when applied to the creator this you know one could argue a feminine principle because these roots means um, I mean everyone has an abdomen but not you know men don't have a vagina and men do not have wombs to incubate and so this makes sense when we're talking about the infinity because nothing exists outside of infinity everything is created inside the infinity and so the infinity itself acts as a womb, as as a vagina. The infinity gives birth, exit from the self, from gives birth from the center to everything in existence. And so this word dinene, chinene, means again abdomen, vagina, and matrix. But uh, in another sense, it also means uh, big, fat, large, and voluminous but it also means to be elastic and you know to go away into infinity so we're, we're repeating ourselves um, in that sense but the Chiluba Bantu language and Bantu languages Niger Congo these these words exist and they also apply to the creator and so when the the, the Baluba people in the Central Africa they have many names and epithets for the creator but one of them is Invidi Munene. So Mvidi Munene. <laughs> you know, the, the, the vast, the large, the infinite uh, spirit. Mvidi is just a word for spirit. And so uh, these, these are the names. And so this plays prominent into our question because if one is arguing is the black man God we have a conceptual problem here because according to African tradition 
everything is God. God is existence. God is everything and all things at once. And so nothing can exist outside of God. And so from the African perspective, God is existence. And so to ask is the black man God is really not even really a special question because everything is God, because everything falls under the infinity. Everything came out of the infinity. And so, you know, this is on that question. And so, you know, I know that'll be up for debate for a lot of folks, but, you know, this is the perspective of what we find on the continent. And so, this leads us to this other word here, um, which is un nefer. This is a title amongst folks. And this word un is just this word new. This word here, the phonemes are switched. It's a process called metathesis. And this actually may be um, something as a result of the law of Belova. But that's going too far into linguistics and I won't deal with that here. But this word un and this word new, they're basically the same word. The phonemes are just switched. And so this word means existence, to be, to live. But the African languages uh, help us to understand it a little bit more because it's a word for owner. And so in Chiluba, we would say this word here, un, with this mu prefix is the word mwene. And this is a word that is put in front of uh, nouns and titles which denote the quality of, one who possesses, the owner of. And so this N root here, again in the Yoruba language, is an L sound. So you say ola or olua or olu. And so when you say like Olo du Mare, you know, the owner of the heavens and things of this nature. Oluwa. All of that. It's the same, it's a cognate term, just in different language families. And so this word here is nefer. And so this is the represents un, and these are, one could actually put, you know, another N here. Um, but this is